Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at my old Kenwood TS440 SAT. See if we can get this thing fixed up. I bought this thing a few years ago from QTH.com. I actually got a really good deal on it. When I first got it, it worked perfect. But after I owned it for about six months, it started to develop all kinds of problems. But today I've dragged the thing off the shelf, I've put it on the bench, and hopefully I can go through it and take care of the last remaining problem so that I can put this thing on the air and use it. I really enjoy using this radio. I just haven't had the time to go through and take care of this last problem that remains. And that problem is that the radio is completely off frequency. I think all we need to do today is figure out how to get the receiver aligned on this radio and then it'll be usable again. I probably ought to go through and recap the whole thing too. Certainly wouldn't hurt it. But I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I think I'm just going to try and get it aligned so I can use it for a while. And then when I get some more time and bandwidth, maybe I'll put it on the desk here and completely gut the thing and replace all the capacitors and give it a thorough going over. What I want to do today is just get it usable. So having said all that, I've got a little bit of knowledge and skill with these old radios, but I'm certainly no expert. So if there's anything you think that I could do different or improve upon, give me some constructive feedback down in the comments. But for now, I'm going to get the camera in a little closer. We'll pull the cover off and take a look inside. So here's a look at what's happening. I'm going to take this plastic adjusting tool and I'm going to try and tune L20 and you'll kind of hear the radio come in and out of tune, basically. You may be able to hear I've got something tuned in there, but it's not very stable. And if I change the position of this tuning stick even a little bit, even just a little bit of slight pressure down, not even turning it, I lose that signal or it changes. So there's definitely something wrong here in VCO5. So I've got the board out of the radio and we're taking a close look at VCO5 here. Now I'm not sure if it's going to show up well enough in the camera or not, but you may be able to see that all of the goop that would have normally been in here from the factory that causes all the problems with the displays on these radios has been scraped out. Well, most of it has been scraped out. If you look real close, you may be able to tell that there's some residue kind of left in there on the bottom of the board, but for the most part, it's gone. Now, if you're not familiar with this particular problem with these TS440s, the goop that the factory puts in here becomes slightly conductive over time, and it causes problems with the VCO, and it usually manifests itself by causing the display to read all dots, and then the radio really can't be tuned or even used. So the fix for that is to scrape all that junk out of here, and then the radio usually starts working again. So one thing I may not have shown in a previous clip in the video is that I did do a voltage check from this leg of this inductor to ground, and I measured about 1.7 volts DC. According to the service manual, I should have 5 volts here. So something's really off, and I don't think it's the goop residue that's in here. I think there's another problem. So the purists out there may cringe a little bit because I put that blue mark on there, but rest assured it's not going to hurt anything. But for now, I just wanted to give myself an outline to work within so that I knew where the affected area would be. So I want to first draw your attention to these connections here. There's one, two, three, four. And those are the pins that actually hold the shield to the circuit board. You may be able to tell that they're bright and shiny compared to the rest of the solder connections. And I believe that's because a previous owner pulled that shield off of there in order to get that old glue scraped out of VCO5. So I'm not sure if these are going to be visible in the camera or not, but I want to draw your attention to a few solder joints I noticed here. So you may be able to see that there's some haloing going on here. The lead is protruding through the hole and has solder wetted to the lead but around that little blob of solder where it's wetted, kind of around where the whole wall would be, it looks cracked and separated from the rest of the land. So what I think has happened is when the previous owner was scraping all the glue out from the component side of the board, these components were stressed a little bit and these solder joints were just cracked. And in fact, wherever I see sort of a suspect solder joint, that happens to be a larger part that would have sort of a bigger bending moment 
that could more easily crack the solder joint. The solder joints that still look good in here are for parts that are smaller and wouldn't be easily bent. So the right thing to probably do here would be to pull all the components out of VCO5 and really clean the surface of the board and get all that old glue residue out of there. And then inspect the components, maybe replace any of the ones that look suspect or have some glue residue on them themselves that won't easily come off, and then solder everything back together. But I don't think I'm going to do the right thing. I think I'm going to do the easy thing in this case, at least just to test out my theory. What I'm going to do is reflow the solder joints in this area and then put the board back in and test the radio and see what happens. It only took about five minutes to get the board out. Probably won't take much more than that to get it back in. And if everything works after that, well, great. I'll put it on the shelf here and use it until it acts up again. If not, then I'll go through all the trouble, pull everything out and fix it the right way. So anyway, let's get the soldering iron heated up and get these joints reflowed. So I've got all the solder joints under VCO5 reflowed. Hopefully they're all better than they were when I started. So now I'm going to throw the board in the radio and see what happens. Hopefully it'll work. And as you can see, I'm now probing test point 11 and I'm getting just about 5 volts, which is where we want to be according to the manual. So I think for now, VCO5 is straightened out. For the state of Georgia, can you ask that operator to move down a couple of KC? You guys are wiping us out on 48. Can you ask him to move down? Uh, I just heard yes. I can absolutely, uh, I will cue us live. I, I certainly appreciate Thank you very much. Uh, no problem at all. As you can hear, the radio is now receiving, and it seems to be working like it should. In fact, that was a Parks on the Air station, and just for fun, I grabbed the microphone and tried working him, and he heard me. The radio was working, which is definitely a step in the right direction. So it looks like I've got the basic functionality of the radio kind of straightened out. As you guys heard, the receiver's working okay, and I actually made a couple of contacts with POTA stations, no complaints there, so the transmitter seems to be working at least well enough to make POTA contacts anyway. The next problem I want to address is the fact that the attenuator doesn't seem to work. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to turn the volume up on this conversation that's going on. I'll turn the switch on and off a few times, and you should be able to notice that nothing happens. But what should happen is when I push the switch in, it should cut the receive signal by like 20 decibels or something. So I ended up going through the Kenwood and figuring out what was wrong with the attenuator circuit. It turned out it was just a bad inductor in the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out the whole troubleshooting and repair process that I used to fix the attenuator in a separate video. Once that video is created, I'll put a link in the description and a card up top somewhere. But what I'll do here is just splice in a few highlights from the repair process just so you have an idea of what went wrong here. So I'm going to first probe the side of this inductor and you can see on this side we've got the 12.8 volts that we would expect. So now if I probe the other side of the inductor, you should be able to see in the meter that I'm getting 4.4 volts. So that tells me that that inductor has failed open. If that inductor was acting like it should, we really should be getting 12.8 volts or so on this side of it too. So I think we might have found our bad component. So hopefully you guys can see my little jumper wire that I've bent up. You can see it's designed to kind of go up and around the inductor. Now one of the legs is a little longer than the other just for handling. I will trim that once this is all soldered in. The other thing you may be able to see is I've got some Kapton tape here, kind of holding these wires up against the side of the radio, but also to give myself a little protection in case I kind of hit them with the soldering iron. Hopefully this will prevent me from melting the insulation on the wires because I will be soldering right here against this bundle. To make things a little easier to solder, I'm going to put some flux on my lead here, and then I'm going to pre-tin the end with some solder. That should make it a little easier and faster to solder onto the old inductor in there. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the inductor. I'm going to put a little flux on the two leads, and then we'll tin that with solder too. Okay, let's give this a shot and see if we can get it to stay. Alright, the first side tacked in pretty easily. Let's do the other side now. Okay, I think that's okay. So what I'm going to do now 
is trim that excess bit of lead on this side and make sure it comes out of there so it doesn't short anything. So I used my magnifier to inspect the solder joints. They're not exactly the prettiest things I've ever seen, but they're actually not bad considering what's going on here. So I think what I'll do now is just clean a little bit of the excess flux residue with some IPA. So I've got the radio all hooked up on the bench here. I've tuned to a frequency where there's a couple of guys talking. So I'll turn the volume up, we'll try the attenuator and just make sure that it's still working before I finish cleaning up the radio, putting it back together and putting it in service. So here it is with the attenuator off. And there it is with the attenuator on. You can definitely hear that it's working like it should. So the old TS440 is all cleaned up and ready to get back on the air. Now there are a few things that still need to be addressed, but I'm going to save those for a later day. The biggest issue that still remains is the fact that the internal tuner isn't really working right. When I tried the tuner out, it seems like it's trying to work. All the motors and everything are turning the way that they should, but I believe there's some relays in there that are either stuck or not functioning or... Who knows, maybe we got more bad inductors. Either way, I'm going to save that repair for another day down the road when I have some more time. For now, I can just use it with an external tuner if I need one and we'll be good to go. The other thing that probably would be a good idea on a radio of this age is to replace all the old electrolytic capacitors and do a full alignment on it, as I kind of mentioned earlier in the video. The radio seems to be working at least well enough to kind of mess around with on the air. So I'm going to save that for another time too. The other reason I want to save the alignment for another day is that, as you guys saw, I don't have a ton of sophisticated test gear. Now what I do have is old, it's functional, but I don't have everything that I would need to do a full really precise alignment on this radio. So maybe when I'm ready to do that, I'll have some more test equipment that I can use to kind of do it properly. But anyway, like I said, I think I'm gonna throw this thing over in the operating position, get it on the air, and just enjoy it for what it is for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Seven, four, one.